Welcome to the championship final match of the USCA Nationals America Rules Croquet Tournament held in West Palm Beach at the NCC in October of 2021. You're watching Matthew Essek come in with blue, going to corner four. Red came in and went to the east boundary about level with hoop six. Black joined up with blue and yellow set up in front of hoop one. This is a double elimination event. Matthew has one loss, so he has to win two in a row to win the championship. Red passed, staying on the west boundary. Yellow pass staying behind wicket one. Furniture in the way. He chose to wait and attack using blue rather than doing a croquet out with black because of yellow's position in hoop one. He's far more concerned about yellow coming in long and wreaking havoc than he is about messing up the attack of red on the boundary. And because he's attacking the danger ball, he's going to run a break, not try to set something for black. And you can say this about a lot of these shots, but if he misses this, he's going to lose this game. He did not. Hampered shot requires a referee. Johnny Mitchell, a past president of the USCA and a Hall of Famer, out to do the duty. In both AC and American rules, he can rest the head of the mallet against the hoop if he wants to. In American rules, you can't touch the hoop with a shaft, whereas in AC you can. Not needed here, obviously.
If you're going to keep a ball out of the game like that, you're advised to keep it off the approach line to the hoop. Matthew's about to illustrate why that is. Blue in the game is dead on yellow, which is not in the game. As long as yellow is not encroaching into hoop one, Matthew can knock it out of position in the course of making two back. But he has to make the hoop, otherwise it's a dead ball fault. If he thought there were a significant risk of that, he could just have yellow marked and lifted, make the hoop, and then put it back. No need, and off he goes. A half spooner is an American Rules game in which one wins 26 to 1. We discussed it in the doubles game in this playlist between Matthew and Stephen. Morgan against Sharif and Sandy Canoe. Matthew's been known to crave a half spooner, but I think he'd rather win this game than mess around trying to get that done. To accomplish that, he would have had to knock Yellow more completely out of position and then rely on Red not to hit in in the next turn. I think this was on purpose. Black is for two. So he's going to leave it on a north boundary where he can maybe give it a rush back to its hoop.
Not bad for the first salvo of the game. An attack, 10 hoops. Both balls on the boundary, so red can't take the shot, and black has a rush to its hoop. Yellow is, of course, poised to come in long, so he doesn't want any part of that. And yellow just repositioned, this time nicely off the approach line to the hoop. He's obviously not trying to hit this ball, but in American rules, as long as you knock it out, no roque, no deadness. Yellow repositioned, blue passed, red passed, black passed, yellow repositioned again, and finally red comes out of Corner one down by corner two. Yellow passed again. Blue passed and red goes from corner two to corner three. Matthew waits for Red to be placed back in bounds. His turn actually started when Red went out of bounds, but he has 45 seconds. He's up by 10 or 11 hoops, so he's in no hurry. Sets a rush for Blue to attack Red. Yellow is just fine-tuned again. Blue passes and red goes back to corner two. Because there are basically no time limits in AC, there are specific rules for how to deal with an impasse where nobody wants to advance. In the American game, because there's a 45 second shot clock and an hour and 15 minute time limit, there's no need for such a rule because although this can go on for quite a while, the game is going to end because of the clock. I think Matthew went over to check on whether yellow could be cannoned into the game or not. He could have black give blue a rush to hoop one, go over there canning yellow into the game with black and get a break going for black. And with red a long way away, he might get away with that but he's only setting up for that to force yellow to play and it worked yellow came in long and then went out on the north boundary just past hoop two and kind of a wide join with red which is in the corner so finally with blue for rover he'll make his hoop an attack Here comes a croquet out that might look like a mistake because you might wonder whether black, which is for two, 
ends up on the wrong side of yellow. But just watch. Red misses the shot on blue. So now it becomes clearer. He had to put blue far enough away that red had a long, hard shot, which means he needed to be able to rush yellow back towards blue. That's why black was on the left side of yellow instead of the right. I'll bet Matthew got all A's in plain geometry. Becky Essick, his grandmother, will watch this sooner or later. Maybe she'll comment about that. I once posed a riddle to a bunch of croquet players that involved knowing what the symbol was for the square root of minus one. Matthew, who was 16 at the time, was the only one at the table who had any clue that imaginary numbers were even a thing. He got 10 hoops and a good leave out of an attack with blue at the beginning of the game on a three ball break. So let's see what he gets out of a croquet out and a four ball break. Thank you. 
There's nothing remotely off center about his backswing. I don't think he used his Bamford swing trainer, but I'm not sure. He makes such beautiful use of space. He was too cramped there to send that ball to one back as a pioneer, so he made it a pivot ball instead. And it gets far enough away from yellow that he can put this ball at one back and still have a nice rush on six. And now, in contrast to a three-ball breaking game two against Stephen Morgan, where he was cramped for space here, he put yellow on the right side of six so he could get out to the east and have room to maneuver. Here, he's got lots of room, and he has a pivot ball, so he can use the standard approach. For our international audience, that, I think that's David Ekstrom managing the board. He's putting up deadness every time Matthew makes a row K. Some people only put up the deadness at the end of the break. That's certainly what I do on these videos. David Ekstrom is a grandmaster, meaning he's somewhere north of 80. And in a few weeks after this tournament, he won the Masters Division of the Nationals, which means everybody 70 and older. Matthew, by contrast, just turned 22. I think he's checking on the time. Not that he's doing this, but one way to stall for time in these games is to run a break because with four balls, there's seven shots between hoops. You got 45 seconds for each one. You can burn a lot of clock doing this. There's no clip on Rover because 
Blue made Rover in setting up the croquet out that started this break. So Matthew doesn't even have to get an appeal to peg out for the win. Ah, the luxury of a four ball break. The pivot ball can serve as an escape ball for the occasional mishap. And for you AC players who never played American Rules, watch what happens next. And AC turns over, but in this game, nine inches from the peg, and you have two shots to hit that peg. Which he does to take game one, 26 to two. He had to play a second game because he had one loss in the double elimination knockout. He won that one 26 to three to complete a phenomenal run of 12 wins all by pegging out for 26 points. That makes Matthew Essek at age 21 when he did this, a six time national champion, four in 2021 and two in 2020. Many more to come.